What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, sinks and inks, and welcome to Lactic Acid. I'm your host, Dominic Smith. Today, I am super pumped to have a legend. I'm talking Waffle House legendary track and field, former track and field athlete, now commentator. If you see her and she looks familiar, then yeah, it is the GOAT, Miss Carrie Tollison of C. Tolly Run. <laughs> And also, she's probably been on your TV screen interviewing your favorite athletes, and she joins me today. How are you doing? Appreciate you coming on the show. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. I didn't put any makeup on. My hair is still wet from my run, but I thought, you know what? That's just how we roll up in here. I'm still it's an athlete, 100%. <laughs> all thriller, no filler. Obviously, obviously, it. listen, it's it's all good. I don't have any makeup on either. So <laughs> like join the club. So like I said, we're thriving. That's the beautiful part about this show. Yep. It's, it's very authentic. So I've been asking people this question uh, to start off the show because I live in the hot state of Florida, born and raised, lived here forever, still wishing for a winter wonderland. <laughs> and it is berserk hot. So my question to you, so let's just say Ben and Jerry's came to you and said, you know what, Carrie, you are the OG of track and field. You just have done incredible things in the running community. You have an OG show, see Tolly run, and we just love you. You are somebody that we want to promote. So we are going to build a promotion around you. You have to pick two flavors of ice cream that you want to build the promotion around and you have to come up with a title for the promotion. What oh, would the wow. two flavors of ice cream be and what is the title of the promotion? Oh man. Well, I love get after it. And okay. I think that could work with any flavor because yeah. when I eat ice cream, I definitely get after it. And actually <laughs> if, if you knew anything about me, you know, that, a milkshake every night is something I do, even when I was training. So really? I love it. They, yes, I always ended my night and they weren't huge, but they were just, that's what I did. It's what I do. So get after it could be one, maybe smooth and silky could be another one. I like get after it. So, I like, I think you I, have to roll with that. Smooth and silky is, 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 that could be the subtitle. Or Sporty um, Spice. I like Sporty Spice because I always say that. I tell my daughter that all the time. I'm like Sporty Spice. Okay. Like I got a little zhuzh, but I'm also just 100% Sporty Girl. So, okay. Um, yeah, but I think I love a good old chocolate ice cream. And then with the milkshake, you put a little skim milk in and that's it. Just smash it up and eat it up. So that's, that's what it is. I would go with um, chocolate first. And then if I had to pick another one, probably like a cookies and cream because I'm an Ooh. Oreo girl all the way. Hey, mm -hmm. I like that. So chocolate, Oreo, cookies and cream. I'm, and yeah. get after it. Listen, and it's, it could be in a, that would be the awesome thing. So because you are the OG, we will make it into a milkshake. It, it will be available for sale, but it will be a milkshake. Yeah. I love that. Really, I I think that it's the way to go in life. You end your day with just a little something. But honestly, some people drink wine. See, I am I am. This body was built by fried chicken. My motto is fried chicken is bad for oh, the body, yeah. good for the soul. So yes. with ice cream, I'm with it just a little mm -hmm. bit especially on the tough days and everything I like know. that it does and then it's nutritious for you because you have the dairies to help build strong bones which helps prevent <laughs> injuries especially if you run so this is yes. a public health service announcement y'all need to get yourself a scoop or two of ice cream each night specifically I mean, cookies really? and cream and chocolate yeah there we go my husband is like sometimes he gets after the kids we have three little kids he'll be like there is no ice cream tonight i'm like oh no we do not punish them without a milkshake. Like that mm -hmm. is just life's reward. Yes. Good or bad. You get your little ice cream. Here's the punishment. You have to find a flavor that they hate. <laughs> like pistachio. There... Oh, okay. Or... Yeah, that's maybe not quite what I want at night. Yeah, like pistachio or, or better yet, you have to give them the sugar-free ice cream. Oh, nope. 
or the fat free even nope yes that's not doing that, that that's punishment like if you no, you got an f on the test uh-uh here's two scoops of this sugar-free fret free ice cream pistachio <laughs> ice cream you have to sit here and eat it and i guarantee Dude. you they'll, i guarantee you there'll be a straight a student from there this might be brilliant maybe we need to write a book about milkshakes and life and if you get a you know good if you have a good day you get a good shake yes not such not such good day you don't get such good ice cream you don't get such good ice cream you have to <laughs> you have to opt better yet no you have to go sherbet or something like that the crappier you are the lower levels that you have how to about see. custard i'm not into the custard sorry carvers not for me oh you're not a carvers man okay i'm not i'm not i mean i would do it if i had to but that might be one of those C plus days. Yeah. You, you know? have to go take a scoop because they have some weird flavors. So I, I have a really, really good friend who lives in Minnesota and she hooked me on Culver's because they built one down here because I didn't know like what the, yeah. I'm like, okay, they put butter on their burgers. Like I've been doing this for years and everything mm -hmm. like that. But like some of the customers are good, but it has such this weird after texture and that yeah like yeah. I, I i don't know but people listen i mean it's 98 degrees here so anybody you know if you put if you froze a flip-flop then somebody would come in <laughs> but um <laughs> but oh, man i think yes that's that is a there was this old show on nickelodeon called nasty classified school survivor guide and we need to change it to the get after it parent survival guide on how to raise children Yes, they, on ice they, cream. Yes, if they give you attitude, that's one scoop of the fat-free, the lactate. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes, ice cream. And, oh. <laughs> so that that's what we're going to do. And we're going to have, gosh, we will have so many sponsors. I'll write the oh, forwards. You'll have Ben and Jerry sponsoring the show. You'll have we lactate. Dairy Queen. Dairy, Dairy Queen. Queen. Sponsor. They're big here in Minnesota. I mean, yes. Come on. Dairy Queen. I've actually been to Dairy Queen once. And do you not have a lot of those in Florida? Not that I've seen. We oh, have. They're all over here. I've seen maybe, honest to God's truth, in a 70 to 100 mile radius, I've seen maybe two Dairy Queens. No way. They are so good. Do you know what a blizzard is? I do. I've, I've had one before. <laughs> so the Oreo blizzards. That's where I go with Oreo ice cream i go right over to our local dairy queen have a blizzard it's so good oh my gosh dairy queen we need to open up in florida we need all the help we can get we don't have yeah. many great we have a Publix, which is a grocery okay. store that sells great ice cream uh probably like cold stone yeah we we're big on cold stone down yeah. here um we have a Edie's ice cream we have a couple and then we have some local I, I don't know for a state this hot nobody has ever yeah. really thought and then we used to have some what we used to have like it was called friendlies yes because um, i was i went to villanova and okay. friendlies on the east coast is a big deal right so that must be florida included they close they closed it i used to go to they, friendlies yeah. and so we for a state this hot this unnecessarily hot which is to me is just demonic um <laughs> but and i i live here i'm 28 i've lived here all 28 years and it, it's just still it's like let's that, go see, let's get one going we have to it's just you know i'm living like frosty the snowman when he went into the greenhouse uh <laughs> living here but um uh, we can talk it. we can talk about ice cream all day because i'm kind of getting hungry and it's only 11 30 yeah and uh, and when I run, it's like the first thing I kind of want to do after, you know, especially after a big race. But a you big should. Old yeah. You should. Like, I honestly, I love this I did. way of thinking. <laughs> it's just reward yourself for yeah. being great in that moment. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, listen, it's, it's, it's really, I don't understand how you're not sponsored by ice cream right now with this much. Seriously, can I tell you back in the day, I really thought I should be sponsored by Dairy Queen, but that was when I was racing, mm -hmm. you didn't really have other sponsors besides your shoe company. That was really the thing. Like 
uh, T-Mobile started, um, people worked at Home Depot, like they had a, a, a program where they would help athletes, but there weren't multiple sponsorships like there are now. And it's funny that you say that because I really was like talking to my agent who was Mark Wetmore at the time and Rich Canal was helping Mark. And I was saying, can we get a Dairy Queen sponsor? Because this girl <laughs> eats up all kinds of Dairy Queen around here. I'll <laughs> tell you. Or you know what stinks? NIL was not available. No. Uh, you would have had the most epic NIL deal. <laughs> like <laughs> We like would have had ever. some fun. We could even work in the school cafeteria swiping the cards for $2 that... an hour or whatever it was. Like I, I did babysit a little bit. And we couldn't even claim, like, we couldn't tell anyone. It was, like, That's terrible. That's awful. I know. The NCAA, you guys suck. But yeah. let me stop saying that, because, but. I mean, I'm happy for the athletes now, but I also am like, oh, there's a little, come on. I'd be a little salty. Like, listen, like, yeah. you, you don't know. You you are a pioneer for the NIL deal. So it's it's only willing that we should have an alumni NIL that yes. like the alumni I mean, and give alumni. Back. Yes. Sow a seed into the people who sow that seed into you. That's there you saying. go. There you so, go. It is a I, it is a controversial topic at times, isn't it? Oh my like gosh. going back and forth. Like I get why it is a little hard for some people to want to accept it, but then I also understand why you wouldn't want to when you're you know, such a, a great, I guess, ambassador of a program or of a product and all these fun things. So yeah, it's a de it's definitely an interesting conversation. Yeah, it's it's a lot of, well, you know, they shouldn't be able to do this and welcome my son or daughter. But I will say this before we move on. College athletes, before you take an IL deal, remember that you do have to pay taxes on that. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. so taxes that's, are that's, no fun. I'm telling yes. you, they're no fun, yes. but we got to do it. Taxes suck and just hope you get some back. So, <laughs> all right, let's dive into this fun before, listen, I don't mind yesterday I had an interview and we almost did an entire show on the good place. So I can definitely <laughs> squeeze one in on ice cream, but World Championships just went down. And so yes. you actually did not attend. So I wanted to get your thoughts on just everything that you viewed, you know, obviously mm. being a former athlete. Well, really, you still are a current athlete. So from a current athlete, to me, anybody who does athletic activity longer than the average Joe or Sue is an athlete. <laughs> so yeah. you being a I agree. Yeah, I think so, everyone has an athlete in them. So like I do a bunch of coaching. Actually, you can see my mom's on the run. Okay. And my ladies are anywhere from, you know, I guess one of our younger athletes is maybe 22 and they go all the way up to like 65. Some groups have 70 year olds. And I started calling them athletes because they're my athletes. I coach them. And some of them have come up to me and said, nobody has ever called me an athlete. You know, some of them are learning to run. They're walking or they walk jog. Some of them have done 50 marathons, but there's such a wide range. And I call every one of them an athlete because I think we all are athletes. Yeah. We just might not have found that, you know, what people think is an athlete in us until we've started something. But if you come to class and you do an interval workout or you want to run a race or you have a goal, you're an athlete. Yeah. So I totally agree with you. We're all athletes. Oh, yeah. I think that's a societal issue about labeling what's an athlete, who's an athlete, who's yeah. an elite athlete, especially in right. this sport, <laughs> because, yeah. you know, somebody may not make the medal stand or somebody may not make it to the finals, but they're still doing something incredibly well at such a high level that you just yeah. no random person could do. Um, For sure. So, but yeah, what, what are, what are some of your thoughts on it? And uh, you were telling me earlier that it, there was actually a pretty cool, not cool, but there was a reason uh, why you couldn't attend this year. Yeah. You know, I had a couple opportunities the last few years to do commentary and different things at these big events. For instance, the Olympics last summer, the world championships this summer and some other events. And I am a mom of three. Like I said, I have a 12 year old daughter and two little boys that are nine and six. And, you know, you know that I travel and I am commentating at a lot of the events, not all of them, but I could probably be traveling. I don't know, 
40 to 45 weeks a year if I wanted to and do an event. And there are times when I just have to say no and put family first. And yeah. the Olympics was one of them. I was asked to do the Olympic broadcast service. And I said no, which sounds very crazy. And I am not kicking myself, but sometimes I was like, ah, did I just really <laughs> shoot myself in the foot for future broadcast roles? But um, I said no, because I thought that was too long to be away from my family. And then I had a couple opportunities for the world championships, but I made it known early that I didn't really want to be gone that long. And not only for my family or for my kiddos sake, but for my husband's. And so I think that I am in this stage in life where I don't want to miss out on these young kids of mine. You know, I, I don't know if it's better for me to choose playing at the playground for two, three, two, three hours a day than to go and do these really cool opportunities like the world championships and the Olympics games, but I don't get my kids back. I don't right. get these little, you know, six, nine and 12 year ages back again. So I did decide to stay home and, when I was home this year, NBC called me and said, can you do the Diamond League at the end of August? So I think the big learning piece for me is that you can say no to things in life and things will not stop. You might not get the next role that you would think, but things keep coming in or you figure things out. So right. it was amazing to watch. I have had so much FOMO like every day. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But at the same time, I was so thankful to be home with the kids. So it's one that's of those my things, long spiel. It's one of those things where like, it's one thing to be at the stadium watching, you know, Kara Winger, um, you know, getting the silver medal in the javelin or watching Sid just defy life. Yeah. In, in the in the hurdles and so i i i still i that's one of those performances i still don't know what to say but i still I can't formulate a sentence um i forgot the young lady's name in the hunter hurdles um really still can't formulate that because to me that came out of nowhere yeah her what did she run 12 12 12 12 and then if it wasn't for as frank sinatra said the summer wind uh she would have yeah. run 1206 that yeah. would have been legal but it's one thing to be there which i know it was insane but that seems like an awesome opportunity you can sit there with your kids and then yeah years later they can be like i was sitting with my mom and dad and my other siblings when we saw on the tv sid break the world record and because you've had the luxury of interviewing Sid and mm -hmm. you've gotten a chance to see her like you can relay that information to them in a way that kind of helps the experience and I I think helps them grow to love the sport even more you are 100% on and I am glad you said it because I don't even think I realized that in the moment I mean us all of us are watching Sydney uh, run her 400 meter hurdle final and I was talking to them and then I pulled up pictures from the USA's where I had, had interviewed her there. And, you know, I was talking to the kids about them and we watched the replays over and over again, or we watched Duplantis like crush it, you know, in the final event of the games and, you know, just watching Whiteman in the 1500, like all the marathons, we were watching it all together. And you are right on right there where my kids are like, mom, I've interviewed Emma Coburn before at mm -hmm. Foot Locker Cross Country Nationals. Or, you know, mom, is that Allison Felix who you went to the Olympic Games with and get to go and commentate at her event next weekend? Like, you're right. Like, I have this influence on these three little kids, but they're spreading it. You can hear them talk about it out on the playground or wherever they are. And yeah, I mean, it's not reaching millions of people like I would be if I had been on you know, the NBC broadcast or a different broadcast. But for me, those are the three most important people in my audience. So for sure, I love that you said that. I remember in 2012, so I competed in high school and then I coach, you know, a little bit later. But I remember my mom and I, my mom's not, she, she likes sports because I cover sports for a living. And so we were at this restaurant 
and I will never forget it. I was eating, and this place had the best French dips known to man. Oh my gosh. And I'm so sad that they closed down like 10 years ago. But we're eating, you know, the French dips. I had was about to start college in a couple weeks. And I remember being there watching the women break the world record in the four by one. And sitting at this restaurant and the entire restaurant, we turned around and we watched and we talked about it. She's like, is that Allison Felix and all that stuff? And, mm -hmm. and I was like, yeah, and, and everything. And so I just remember these times, you know, with my mom who, you know doesn't it's not you know the biggest sports fan but it's something you know that you know years later I can you know tell my kids you know listen me and my mom you know watched yeah. this and so it left a lasting impression on me and I was 18 so I can only oh. imagine uh what it's done to your kids and it gives them the biggest street cred like on the playground like yeah it, it does like, like if somebody comes up and messes with them, like you can never, they can never play the dozen or anything like that. Like they can never trash. Up. It's like, well, my mom knows Allison Felix. No, she doesn't. And they're like, okay, bet we're on social media now. And all you have to do is pull as the young kids will say, pull up the receipts. And then yeah. like, they'll see that, you know, you've gotten a chance to do all of that. So yeah. that's awesome. To me, you went, that's gold medal worthy. <laughs> Um, it is so, pretty fun that you yeah. got a chance to see it what was the performance that stood out to you or one or two of them because it's hard to really say one. Oh man it's so many great performances I mean I loved how a thing had to dig deep in those final 10 meters you know we really haven't had to see her really go to the well you know she no. did at the or at the USA this year too she was pressed hard in that final but um I think too, I mean, three rounds for her, even as good as she is, she's young. She hasn't had to do it very often. And you can see that she's so good, but that was um, exciting for me. I love watching Jake Whiteman win. I mean, again, oh, yeah. so cool. Um, you know, anytime we, we had so many sweets on the U.S. side and different events that I was like, yes, Noah Lyles, you know, that was just <laughs> so fun. I mean, come on. He's just such a character of the sport. You know, them trying to pit him and Ariane against each other. Like I had to interview them. I couldn't even hear them when I was interviewing them at USA because the crowd is so loud. Wow. And, you know, people were texting me like, that was epic. Like there's such a clash between the two of them. You know, they just want to get the best out of each other. Even if they are a little bit like, oh, they run for the same company. You know, they are going to have an epic battle for a long time. So, yeah, I just, I love them all. Like, whether it was Americans or not, it was such a great world championships. Do you feel like a um, personal connection with the people that you interviewed? Does it kind of give you a different mindset when you watch them? Because obviously, you know, as a reporter uh, in your role at, you know, as a commentator, you have to be extremely neutral um, yeah. because you'll get fired. If you was like, Oh yeah, go Noah. I hope you, you know, you can't do that. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you're human. These people are human. You see the behind the scenes stuff and you've been in their shoes in a sense. So yeah. there's so much more that you understand. Um, but yeah, do you feel that connection and does that kind of make you feel different than the average fan watching when they succeed or even when they fail? Yeah, I definitely feel that. I mean, even for instance, when Devin Allen, you know, was charged oh. with the false start, like I kind of feel like he's a little brother. I've been doing a lot of the American track leagues. I couldn't do a couple of them this year because of family events, but um, I've gotten to know him a little bit and he, you know, he doesn't really know me, but I feel like I'm this big sister or at least like somebody that, you know, like I've seen him on airplanes and I'm making sure he's having his snacks because I know <laughs> he's got to get to the next training, you know, camp or whatever. And, um, but it just hurt my soul for him when I saw that whether it was right or not, that's a whole nother podcast. Um, it you know, was wrong. This was one, I'll say it. It was wrong. I, I didn't like it either, but um, you know, I just felt so bad for him. And in that moment, had I been on the broadcast, I, and, and, you know, even Otto, Otto Bolden, he was saying that too. He was like, he thought it was wrong. He didn't like that technology has so much to, you know, so much say rather than the human eye, things like that. Um, but yeah, those moments are hard. They're really hard, especially when you are, 
from the US, you've made Olympic teams or, you know, made an Olympic team, world championship teams. I, I have a hard time not saying our on a broadcast and we're not supposed to claim a team, right? So like, those are the areas that I do get in trouble. I still think of myself as an athlete when I really am not that athlete anymore. I am now more of a media personality. So I have to do that, but it's just like ingrained in me to be the big sister, still the athlete, and then the commentator or the reporter. And actually when I do my broadcast or my podcast, excuse me, I have a really hard time. I hate the word bothering, but asking to get the interviews, especially like the new and like the newest information or the newest, uh, you know, record that's out. I hate asking the record holder to come on my show because I know how many people are trying to get them on their shows. I just want to be respectful and let them, you know, have their moments. But I also have to remember, this is my job now. I need to get them on the podcast. Yeah. So I'm torn. Yeah. I'm always torn. But I think you present something. This is what I, I learned. You know, I had, you know, an opportunity to work in the mix zone in Eugene last year at the Prefontaine Classic as a part of, uh, you know, a media program. Well, it's called the Magic Boost Program. Yeah. And we saw so many things firsthand, but we got a chance to talk to the athletes to see, like, what is it that you hate? What annoys you? And then there are things mm -hmm. that, I mean, I'm sitting in a press conference. I'm like, well, uh-uh, we can't do this. Like, this is bad. Um, but I think you come at it and just, I've listened to your podcast and we're going to get to that on the, in the second half of the show. You don't come across as like a TMZ. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you, you don't have, it's more of, you're trying to look out for people. That's when I listen to the episodes. Uh, that's kind of how I see it. <laughs> like yeah. you you mentioned like I feel like the book Big Sister reference is fitting because you almost present it that way because in a sense you try to get the information, but you also try to like protect them as well, kind of try to give them a platform to be their best self. That's yeah. this just from an outsider's point of view. I love that. I'm glad because that is kind of my role, I feel like, in life is just to get the best out of people and hopefully get the best out of myself. And I just want to be kind. I want people to, to learn that their journey is important. No matter if you're an elite, like you said early on in this, in this interview, that's how I feel. Like everyone has their story. Everyone has their journey. And, and I think it's really cool to just hear about it. You know, I, I love getting the elites, you know, perspective on how they train and how they race or how they throw or jump or whatever it is. But I just want people to learn about people and to learn from them. So yeah, when I'm out on the infield doing my reporting, which is actually my favorite role, I love to commentate and, and be the analyst, but I also just love to chat with people and hear what was going on in their mind or, you know, how they could fix things the next time or what they thought they did awesome. Like, let's brag a little bit here and there, you know, like life is short. Why not tell people that you were awesome on that day, you know, and whatever you do in life. So that's my fun. I love doing that. I always say Lewis Johnson is the best at what he does, but I want to be his 911. Like if, if he can't do it, can you call me? Cause I awesome. want to be his, I'll, I'll be his, you know, secondhand gal. Like I will be the secondhand gal for Lewis Johnson. And he knows that all the time. I'm like, Lou, if you can't make it, let him call me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you, you, I think the two of you, the platform is big enough for the two of you. When, when they say this town ain't big enough for the two of you, I don't think that's yeah. the case. He would be situation. the first to say that too. He's such a good guy. He really is. What made you get into commentating and being an on-field reporter, which let me just say this, is the most terrifying thing yeah. <laughs> in the world <laughs> to, yeah. to me. You know, it is that red light goes on and a lot of people are like, oh, what, what, uh, what do I do now? Yeah. Or the director says, and we're on, you know, um, I think I like that. When the gun went off, I was in my element, right? When I was racing and I could perform, I loved just being on stage when I was younger, whether I was playing instruments or acting. And I think I was just made to perform. And I love that. It's not necessarily the center of attention. Um, I don't really need to command that, but if I, if somebody needs someone to, I'll, I'll step up. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I think the thing for me is this sport has given my life so much joy. It's given me a lot of heartache at times too, but I always learned from that heartache. And so I definitely, I definitely wanted to stay, you know, in, in the limelight a little bit and be on stage. Oh, I, <laughs> there's a, uh, this would have been a dope analogy, but the doggone song just just <laughs> went away from you. Went away from me, just like the temptations. <laughs> just my doggone imagination running away from me. That is well. It it might have been. I don't know if you can see this on your end, but of course, my mom and dad called during our interview here. So I, I don't saw know the you... screen. I saw the screen. Yes. I and swear, I was... those two, they know whenever I'm racing, whenever I'm commentating, and it doesn't fail. They call or text me right during the middle of it. It's every single time. Oh, my gosh. They are that... my 100% number one fans. I love them so much. But they have ESP. They know when they are not supposed to call or text, and they do every time. You think they do it on purpose? I think they do. But I love <laughs> them so much that I have to just let it go. You have so to I, put up. You if have to you have up. to edit that, sorry, but if so, not, no. just know it was John and Ginge. Shout out to Miss Miss uh, Ginge and uh, yep. Mr. John. And my dad, so John. The, the good thing is it kept flowing. It was just like this little, it's just like a little transition. So I yeah. there's no editing. There we go. And so that's the beautiful part. So we just want to say thank you, Jesus, because the Lord <laughs> knows I hate editing. <laughs> oh, but I also love it because like on my podcast here and there, it is so nice if I say something funny that I can say, hey, can you edit that out? Because, you know, I say funny things sometimes. But why would you, everybody needs to hear that. Why would we edit it out? <laughs> I make up my own words. Let me just say that. I do too. And I tell <laughs> Webster to add them in. Like, I think that's, that's hilarious. So Listen, if you listen to this episode, I have said some stuff that will make you think I need to be put on hooked on phonics. Like, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying. Like, how about, I, I was just thinking of this. Beyonce, wasn't it Bootylicious or something that she got in the Webster Dictionary? Yes. I think I have a few words that could go in there too, but I probably don't have as much pull as Beyonce. You don't know that. Like mm -hmm. I said, you, you don't know that. Um, I think I need you to like be in my ear all the time. You know, you're the fourth poorest person that has said that. And so, like I said, I do that free of charge. P people just yeah. need to hit me up. I got you. Um, See, you and I should just do a show together because that's what it's all about in life. It's lifting people up, being that's... good to one another. That's what, if I could have a job, that would be it. I think, I think you're killing it of doing what you're doing. <laughs> I Aww. honestly do. Like, well. Thank okay, you. I don't want to call anybody a square, but there are certain people <laughs> who you you can tell people who who take their job so seriously that the human element is eroded, mm. and we don't have to worry about that with you. Oh. <laughs> like I said, no, maybe it's a little too fluff at times, but that's okay. No, but sometimes here's the thing: you never know what somebody's going through. Yeah. So that fluff could be uh, uh, just like an anchor because you don't have yeah. to really dive deep because at the end of the day, it's really none of our business. Yeah. But like, like I said, can you imagine, can we bring it back to Devin Allen again? Like I yeah. probably, I sent him a note and I interviewed him at USA's. We were shooting the breeze. You know, he's kind of a charismatic guy. Like he's yeah. dancing after he's looking down at the camera and doing things. And I had heard he was late getting into Eugene for USA's. Never in a million years did I think that he was going through what he was going through. Like he, he blew it off. And not that he would have told me, but we weren't, we're not that tight that he would have said, Hey, this is what's going on. He played it off as if, you know, travel stuff and whatever. And maybe it was travel issues too, but to hear that he had lost his dad right before the USA's and then he just had so much composure and you know he didn't he doesn't need to in the track and field world we all are there for him but he yeah. he kept it together and then to have that happen at worlds but that's the thing like we don't know what people are going through and as athletes you and I both know this like we have to keep it together in order to perform and so god what a case in point there and you know I'm just rooting so much for that guy he is 
just such a class act of a guy. Hope he kills it on the Eagles because oh. Lord yeah. knows they need Philly. a receiver. <laughs> they need. Are you a Philly fan? <laughs> well, because I went to Villanova. Oh, that's I true. Started, yeah, I started my broadcast career. My internship was there, and I would every Tuesday I was in the locker room with the Eagles, and Man. you know, getting to follow all of them. And so, I mean, I'm not a real big football fan, but I like the Vikings a little bit because I'm from Minnesota. But you I also know, love watching the Eagles. It's so funny. The Minnesota people I know have a hard time rooting for the Vikings. We just need I, to get it together. Give us a little bit of hope, guys. Come on. Yes, you need an offense. Um, yeah. That, that's just, just, just call it what it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm mm. rooting for him. Devin, yeah, me too. kill it with the Eagles, bro. Because I know. I'm, I'm rooting for you. And I think his best days are ahead. But, you know, you know, to that point, I know people think, you know, it's, it's in this culture, it's soft, but mm-hmm. like I said, if you, on the other side, it's with Devin Allen or anybody else, you don't know what that person's yeah. journey was just to line up in the box. You don't know yeah. what that person, you know, has to deal with as soon as they get done talking with you. Right. Um, so I like, like I said, obviously we have a job, so we have to ask questions, but I like the fluff questions. I think what you do is great asking lighter questions because I don't know. It just, I and this is just speculation and I could just tell you what I like and just feedback I've got. It makes them feel human yeah. and that somebody actually cares. So mm. yes, keep fluffing it up that's <laughs> okay you don't have to tell me twice <laughs> <laughs> and yes if we had a show i was we would it would be called chicken and ice cream or something something oh, i don't even know yes. but I it like would that one it would have to it would have to be because when you said that i was like the name has to center around something mimicking fraser cranes toss salad and scrambled eggs Oh, okay. Um, Wait, I'm gonna go for a run, and this will come to me. Yes, and then just just let me know because that's gonna okay. bother me all day. Because <laughs> it has to, it has to, it has to, it has to flow. Chicken yes. and ice cream. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll go to that later. Um, okay. What are three things that people do not know about the legend that is Kerry Tolson? Oh, oh man. Three things that they do not know. I can say the alphabet backwards. I count while I I walk a lot of times, and it's a little crazy. Um, done. I don't know why I do it, but I sometimes just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> <laughs> My family thinks it's really funny, but they're like, "Are you counting?" I'm like, "Yeah, okay. I'm counting." I don't know why, and I love to dance. Like I could dance all night or watch people dance all night no matter if you're good or you're absolutely terrible i love it all around you sit down and watch bad dancers and like don't don't say anything i love it i would love to just get in on it and dance with them because i mean it brings so much joy like who is really out dancing that hates it people who are in the (laughs) doghouse maybe but (laughs) You really you can't not smile. You That's really true. cannot smile when you're dancing. So, you know, you either are sitting on the sidelines watching and you're mad and you're grumpy and nobody wants to hang out with you anyway, or, or you're, you're out game. on the dance floor just having fun. And I don't drink alcohol. I've never had a drink of alcohol that I've had two sips by accident and then um, communion at church, which I gagged the whole way back to the pew. So I just stopped. I would take the grape juice. Um, but you don't need, I don't need any alcohol i'll be the designated driver and i will stop and get a milkshake on the way home for sure so dancing counting fast and doing the alphabet backwards are maybe my three cool things that is really cool the the counting the alphabet i tried that the other day and i just stopped after why well how do you Um, count the alphabet (laughs) well clearly i just effed that up like i said (laughs) this was oh man i i'm you see do I'm you prone... think you could do the alphabet backwards like like just try just for a little bit well 
I just told you I counted the alphabet backwards, so I don't even feel comfortable <laughs> saying it just in general. Reciting. So Every now and then I'm prone to catch a couple L's on this show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm telling uh, you, I make up my own words. That's what I'm that's saying. Don't yeah. edit that out. We listen, because here's the thing. There is somebody out there sitting in a corner, listening to podcasts, hoping and praying, Lord Jesus, please let there be somebody just like me to help me feel like I belong in this world. Okay. And when okay. they hear you make up a word that has huh? accurate meaning or is better than the word that you intended to say, okay. then that person has hope. It gives them I confidence you. and trust. And listen, we need I'm, to tell people like at ESPN, at NBC, all those places that it is okay to make up your own words. Literally. I mean, <laughs> John Anderson, seriously, like hit us up. Like, if oh. you need consultants or just give us the dog on show, let's turn you know, Sports Center into a track center or something like hey, that. Hey, you need to reach out with John. John and I are pretty good friends. We do a lot of commentary together. He is constantly texting me and he is the greatest guy. Like, I am not throwing a name out there because I can. He is the most humble, sweet man you will ever meet. So, you well, need to get him on your show because he is. He is the goat. <laughs> well, uh, John, well, I got to figure out how to get in touch with Brother John. I'll, that's, that's, I'll get that's... you in touch with John. He is the nicest man, really, well, uh, and loves I'll... our sport. Yes, he and he does a great job. Uh, yeah, and he can take things in stride. Like, yep, I think it was Joe Fombele, uh, who pretty much had oh, a who's nice from roast Minnesota. Things. Who's what is with like the state of Minnesota and these athletes? So. We have the Magic have a point guard named Jalen Suggs, who's yep. from Minnesota. The Played human my nephew. Oh gosh, that's he was a really good football player too. Okay. Uh, there's a guy I root for the Ohio State football team, which is you just have to be happy in life. So um, we had a kid named Jay Sean Cornell who was. He plays for the Detroit Lions now. He's from Minnesota. Um, Chet Holmgren is mm -hmm. from Minnesota. What is with these Minnesota? Uh, honest to God's truth, it it. But let me say this about Minnesota: you guys are the nicest people mm -hmm. that I've ever met. When Minnesota came to Orlando to play Missouri, um, I was in the Minnesota section. I was watching. And outside of you guys just looking so confused as to why it was 85 degrees on January 1st, <laughs> um, and they had overalls on and, and yeah. all this stuff, they were like the nicest people. I'm like, mm. you people don't belong in Florida. We, we just... <laughs> because this is not a nice state like the people are no, nice here no i only you have belong nice in floridians too it depends on what part of florida you go to true that's probably the same here to be honest um i i think that a lot of athletes come out of minnesota like eager i i don't know there is something about it here i mean there's there's something about athletes from every state, but I have heard time and time again that a lot of colleges like to recruit the Midwest. And I do think it's partly because we do have to go through a lot with the weather. <laughs> that toughness. I feel like you're so yeah. cold that it's like, maybe if we can defrost them at <laughs> other locations, <laughs> then, yeah. then that strength and then that speed and energy can That's just- That's what I think it is. I think we oh. sometimes want to get the heck out of here. So we oh, will man. be as nice as we possibly can. I mean, we always end up coming back. It's weird. I mean, look look at your career. I watched one of your races, and listen, you had the consist. I've been using this, and I will forever use this until the day I die. You had the consistency of a Waffle House, <laughs> like it. It and that is as consistent as it comes, mm. because Waffle House is there for you, no matter no matter what you know it's good um and you like when you ran you helped another win the national championship so you had to get out of there to show that you ran like people owed you some money so <laughs> i mean 
what you're saying is true, man. I, I, I'm, I'm with it. We need to recruit yeah. more Minnesota athletes. When you're not focusing on the beautiful sport of track and field, what are some mm-hmm. of the things? And not watching people dancing and not reciting the <laughs> alphabet backwards. I'm not even gonna try. I think Z Y X. Yeah, X W W B. Anyway, to the question. When you're not <laughs> doing you're all You're going to do that, it all day. You're going to try. And then you're going to start counting while you walk. And you're going to be like, oh, it's kind of fun to count my feet. Well, I'm <laughs> technically still trying to count the alphabet. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so let's not do but, that anymore. Uh, it doesn't work. I mean, listen, I'm not going to edit that out. Like I said, <laughs> it's I'm, I'm, I'm going to think about it. But um, mm. what what is a, what does fun look like for you? Well, I would have to say the later ages in my life here, I have really enjoyed being that well-rounded athlete that I used to be when I wasn't focused so much just on the sport of of running. You know, now that I've had kids, I am doing every sport you can possibly think of. Like I am back on that playground playing (laughs) all the basketball, baseball, softball, tennis. We've been golfing. We've been doing it all. And I just love that. So I am a, I am that sporty spice that I talked about earlier. Um, I love to cook. I don't have a lot of time anymore. So I feel bad sometimes because we are doing the quick meals, but I love to cook. We travel a lot, even though I travel so much for work, it's fun for our family to go and travel. So getting on a beach or going in the mountains is pretty cool. Um, I think I'm just an outdoors kind of girl. And if I'm not outdoors, I love a good nap. Listen, listen, render me speechless because a good nap is like a good, good um, bowl of ice cream. That's that's just because it's it's soothing for the soul unless it doesn't have to be long. No, 15, 20. I'm good there. A nice power nap just to get you going. Now, I saw a video uh, back in the day. You went full on Kareem Abdul Jabbar on that basketball court. Like I, I saw it, you know, putting it under your legs and stuff. I was like, oh snap, we got the second <laughs> coming. We got the Minnesota version of Allen Iverson on this court and all the stuff. I was like, man. Oh, funny. The I gray-haired no sneakers. What are they called again? There's something around here called the gray-haired sneakers. And I thought I was gonna try and do it. And my <laughs> sister went. She got boxed out and got bruised on both hips. I'm like, oh, no, not going there. Not Not paying for an ACL repair. (laughs) So, but I did love to play ball. I definitely did. I had a center that went and played pro when I was younger. She went to the UWGB, University of Wisconsin, Green Bay, and was one of Minnesota's top five. And we had fun. I loved playing basketball. And even when my coaches said, you know, we know you're nationally ranked as a runner. I was one of the top 25 guards in the state when I was oh. in um, high school, but I wasn't going to go D1, you know, maybe could have snuck onto a D2 team, but, but it's still like, I love it. If I could just, if I could just warm up to the pep band one more time in life. <laughs> Listen, there is nothing like going out. I, I don't care if you are a bench rider. The layup line coming out. Exactly. <laughs> there is nothing like it. I played football. And even in warm-ups, my greatest joy was just running out, feeling yeah. like I belong, and getting ready to have a nice warm seat on the bench for the entire game. But that 10 minutes, oh man, <laughs> you get the best pictures. You oh. get, oh, man. Hyped. Hyped. <laughs> There is nothing like it. You turn into Allen Iverson. Like you turn into like LeBron James, Michael Jordan. Yes. Just, you, you practicing all your moves. We used to sit down and we used to watch. I, I'm, I don't know if you did that too, but every now and I then. I totally did. We were bench warmers. So we peek at the opposing team and whoever did the fanciest layup or had the sleeve on, like, oh crap, he's about to drop 40. <laughs> oh, nuts. Yep. And everything. That was all, oh, man. My this is so nerdy. My friends and I, when we were in high school and we were not playing basketball, we were at his house and we were just getting ready to play. Like, guys, 
let's do a layup line <laughs> and everything. And before we play pickup, we just did a layup line. I think that's brilliant. I do that with our kids. Oh man. We crank the music, but it's not the same. I should just pull out some pep band music on Spotify. I'm sure they have it. But you see, all the young kids now are playing actual, not pep band music, but they're actually right. coming out to like. Like <laughs> hardcore, kind of bad language. Yeah. See, I went to a Christian school, so, you know, we were coming out to, like, Jesus Messiah and stuff, which, I, you know, I, I love the yeah, Lord. I am good. Christ. You can't get pumped up on Jesus Messiah. Uh, so we finally, they had to boost it to Lecrae and everything, you know, okay, something okay. with the yeah. bass and all that stuff. Uh -huh. But, uh, yeah, you go to some of these schools, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little interesting. It's like I'm covering my kids' ears. It's, it's like, yeah, not, they're... you know, eye of the tiger. No, <laughs> no, you're not. You're not getting. We used to listen to "In the Air Tonight" by uh, Phil Collins. Oh, uh, yes. Um, back in the uh, when I was playing football, and it's like you'd be sleeping, and then you hear the bop, 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 and then seriously. Oh, I gotta get that one on tonight. I'm gonna have my kids listen to that. My husband and I are uh, total big hair band, '80s, all that stuff. We love it. I listen to that stuff too. I was listening. Yep. I have, I have uh, more than a feeling is something I can jam up to. Oh, so good. Um, oh. gosh. How I, about Janet Jackson's? Like, I think it was her If album. She's got some awesome songs on there. I also listened to um, Eminem a lot. Lenny Kravitz what? was American Woman was one of my favorites. Wow. So you yeah. you old old school. I am old school. I mean, I still like the new stuff, but I'm old school. And I kind of think we need to have pet bands at the track meets. <laughs> but no, listen. So there's a, I, I'm big on the band. I played, I was never in the band, but I played instruments. I played the drums. And believe it or not, I played the violin. I uh, did too. I played the really? trumpet and the violin there's something about it. when I, I always said when this show so i need to sponsor the sponsor the show so i can make this dream a reality because i need to buy another <laughs> violin to pick it back up um yeah. there was something so soothing about the violin that i loved um but and it's funny now we're talking i used to dance too uh did you I actually what was your favorite dance move like did were you did you break so, dance did you oh gosh no that's that's just I What's did the, the worm song? all the time at Big East down the back stretch. If we won, I did the worm. See, I used to, I, I could crank out a worm. Uh, mm -hmm. I used to do the six roll. Oh, um, oh, that yes. Was... That's a good one. But that's old school for you. That was like my era. So we did, a. I was in a little troop for a, a community center for the summer. And okay. they were playing different songs like, um, Listen, my 98% of my iPod, I have an iPod, old school iPod. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it here. But oh, yeah. It's, it's Christmas music, smooth jazz, classic soul, R&B, um, a little bit of soft rock and like gospel. So they were coming out to George Clinton and Parliament. People were doing <laughs> dances to that. And then, yeah, we had the Tootsie Roll. So yeah, I can create out a six year old. I stopped doing the worm recently. I saw this when Jimmy Fallon was in late night. He said that somebody did on his hashtags episode, somebody did the worm at a party and they like dislocated their shoulder. And I was like, oof. So yeah, as we get older, we might need to be careful, but I still do the worm. I retired uh the okay. worm. But that was but you can so still do the Tootsie roll. I could listen, I could do the worm, I could do the Tootsie roll, I could do the Dougie. I just learned how to gritty, which is oh, it's so funny. I can't really gritty actually. I just could I, I don't even do that. The I eyes. do these are mine. That, that's these. vintage. My kids, yeah, they do the but that is yeah. that is vintage. Mm -hmm. Um those are my I dancing used... goggles. I get them out on the dance floor. Let's so it's like the K you should call those the Kayla Deckies because they're like the swim goggles almost. Oh, okay. So I'll do that. Yeah, I mean, listen, that's epic right there. But <laughs> I mean, that would be 
oh man, the music during those times, and then we'll move because I'm I know I'm getting off topic, but there was like Parliament, there was Whitney Houston. I want to oh, dance so with good. somebody. Um, so good. Oh man, see these kids these days they don't they don't understand about good music. Although, like my daughter, she knows some of the old stuff. Like mm, she really? she would know Whitney's. She would know, you know, maybe a few Britney Spears, I guess. Oh, oh whoa, that's vintage, vintage. Yeah. yeah, I know, I know. Backstreet but Boys, and that, Yeah, they do know some of those things. I don't know. She doesn't have TikTok, but her cousins do. So maybe oh, yeah. it's some TikTok stuff. But yeah, it's some good stuff back in the day. That's for oh, sure. Man, I I try to collect it all because it's going to be vintage, like soon. Why so. do you have? Is it a guy thing? But my boys, my two boys have been playing Christmas carols for the last three weeks and drawing <laughs> Christmas pictures, getting the Santa hats out. Christmas in July. I'm like, it is a hundred degrees here. And why are we already celebrating Christmas? So I am, <laughs> I I start celebrating July, uh, September, the first day of fall. For me, it's personal. So my, I will say this, here's my reason. So my grandmother, she passed away when I was two. And so we were like this, this close, but because she died when I was so young, that was my first experience with death. I blocked out her memory. So I don't remember her at all, Yeah. but she loved the holidays. She oh. loved Christmas. And so that natural love for it came yeah. from her. So that's, that's personally why I like it. Now I will say this. I did try the Christmas in July for two weeks. And then it was like, okay, you know, I can't be coming from outside, you know, in the in the sauna known as Florida and yes. come back in singing Deck the Halls. <laughs> so so I may do like one or two weeks. Hallmark has been playing Christmas. They play Christmas. We're in August now. They play Christmas yes. movies all month. And yes. so I think we've I been mean, watching Santa stories. I'm like, come on. Some of those are there's cheesy. There is, I don't even know. The only other thing that's worse than cheesy is like cheese whiz. And some of those Christmas <laughs> movies are like <laughs> cheese whiz. To you me. better be careful. You're talking to a former Philly girl. Cheese whiz is on all the Philly cheesesteaks out there. That's pretty good. Provolone. I know it's not alone too. I can't do cheese whiz. That junk is nasty. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have no. not actually had cheese whiz since probably I was at Nova. See, that's why we grow. That's why we evolve. And that's why you're the best. I will have Velveeta though. Do you have Velveeta ever? Yes, of I course. Know. I make a scratch made macaroni and cheese. Ooh. That, um, that listen, like we said in the to South. Use it. I put my foot in it. So I use Belvita. I use like four different kinds. Listen, mm -hmm. listen I know, I know all about the Belvita. I know. I know, or Belvita on your grilled cheese is like oh, boy. so good. And then do you dip it in ketchup or no or tomato soup? I prefer tomato soup. I like ketchup. I've never had ketchup. So do you put ketchup on eggs? Are you like one of those? Yes. What, what why? is, you've never had ketchup? I've had ketchup. I, I love oh. ketchup, but not on eggs. I, yes, I have ketchup. I said like, you said you never have had ketchup. And I was like, no, 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 no. What? I've never, okay. I'm sorry. I have never. So let's make up a word for that. Clarfustle. I have never had because I said that the other day in traffic. Okay. I've never had ketchup on grilled cheese. It's very good, especially with Velveeta. Better than tomato soup. Yes, I love a good tomato soup. Okay. But ketchup on your grilled I am, cheese. I am, I'm, I'm going to try it. I'm and then when it. you have a little bit of cheese that has oozed out and you take Ooh. it with your finger and then you dip your finger in the ketchup oh that is that has to be a minnesota thing <laughs> like I that is think, i just think that's a carry thing i think people are probably like carry that's taking it way too far 
I don't, if I have a French fry, then yeah, maybe, but you know, I'm not putting no cheese and no ketchup. Just a drop of that big fat Velveeta cheese. It's, it's, you know, it gets hard real quick. Oh boy. I'm (laughs) You just take it and then you dip your finger in the ketchup. Wow. That's maybe a thing that nobody would know about me. Charlie, maybe my husband. But I haven't had Velveeta now in a while either. I think I need to have that for lunch today because it sounds very good. Yes. And, and very we, gross at the same time. It, it, here's the thing. I think it was Isaac Hayes who say it, sang it. And I'll change the lyrics a little bit. Okay, because I do that if too. Grilled cheese is your thing with ketchup on your ring. Cheese on. <laughs> cheese on. Whatever it is you do. Do it good. As the BT Express saying, do it till you're satisfied. I Uh, love it. No hate, no discrimination, all thriller, no filler. So I'm with it 100%. (laughs) See, Tolly Run is one of my favorite podcasts. I did not know (laughs) this is so bad. I, because I had always watched it on YouTube. Mm. I was like, dang, man. Like, she quit the YouTube series. I used Why'd to watch she it go all the away? time. Where'd she go? Well, all I had to do was download the Apple Podcast and you were there the entire time. So I know I miss the YouTube channel. We you know, we had a lot of people at the time that were watching it. And then podcasts got so big that we switched over to podcasting and but I miss it. I definitely I, miss the podcast or the, the, the YouTube, YouTube channel. I, I used to watch it all the time because i just love the face-to-face interaction now youtube is hard to edit <laughs> like i will yeah it, it, it can get time consuming i have so lactic acid this is obviously the podcast but we have youtube exclusive shows which mm-hmm. one day I, I really actually now that we're talking i have a exclusive show called a bucket of track talking fried chicken where we sit down and eat wings yeah. and do hot takes oh. um like hot ones um mm. by that really famous sean evans um but your show, there's so many podcasts popping, but your show was the OG. Like, <laughs> is it's it's the it is the Sesame Street in terms of importance. But I compare you, I can't like compare you like Big Bird or anything like that. <laughs> but you were like to me the Mister Rogers of the podcasting Aww. uh social spirit. What kind of got you started? Like, why did you feel like you wanted to create the YouTube series and then create um, and carry over to the podcast, which has just been incredibly successful? Like, I used to say, like, get after it, like, all the time. Yes! (laughs) Good. Can we back up? Can I be, like, Oprah? Okay. The OG of talk shows? Like, okay, that's kind of, that's what I'd like to be Oprah, not Mr. Rogers. (laughs) <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I'm just, see, Although I don't... my husband gets top, he wears these Patagonia sweaters all the time. So every now and then my family members will say, Hey, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> Listen, I'm not mad at it. I am. I'm not... not, he's so cute. I love it. And they think he looks cute too, but he always has his, his Patagonia sweaters on. I say um, Mr. Rogers because I never really watched yes, Oprah, know. but it was like, oh, that... I loved watching Oprah. That was like before my second run as a pro watch oprah cry a little bit here and there <laughs> and then go, and then i go for a run then get after it <laughs> you know i get after it that's right but yeah you know we when i started all of the youtube channel you know again it was kind of when i was in my broadcast career but also competing and it was so fun to just be able to interview the athletes and um do highlight reels at different races that i was going to be at and then i started having kids and then we were kind of talking a little bit about running through pregnancy and parenting and things like that. And um, it was just so fun to be able to do that. And again, like I wanted to have more reps on camera because I wanted to be on TV. And so that was my way of every week having like my hard workout, right? Like when I was a professional runner, I had two or three hard workouts. And as a broadcaster, I wanted to have a day that I prepped for, I really worked hard at. And then I kind of recovered and analyzed and things like that. So that's why I started it. And yeah, I mean, I was one of the first. And I think that I kind of grew up in this weird time where 
social media wasn't really part of my career, right? So mm -hmm. I don't have this huge social media following, which is a little bit of a bummer at times, but at the same time, my following, they've been with me for a long, long time and they are still introducing it to other people and it's still growing. And I still have a really nice audience, but at the same time, maybe some people like you have seen something that I've done and they've thought, Hey, I can do that too. And so our sport and the media world is definitely growing in a different way. And there's a lot more out there. There's a lot more female voices, which I love. And, you know, it's harder for me to get a broadcast job now because there's more people wanting it. And that's great. You know, we need that. So you it's really, been really fun. You've opened so many doors because like I said, and it's not just that you were one of the first podcasts, but you were one of the first that it didn't, oh, Lord help me. Uh -oh. I do not say this as a knock to any other podcast. I just want to be very clear when I say this. But your show did not sound like an NPR oh. radio marathon. Because does that mean it was more yep. lively? It was more interactive. Your show, I... <laughs> This is really embarrassing, but I had no idea what a dog on soda stream was, but you were interviewing <laughs> Shalane Flanagan and you were like soda stream or something else. I was like soda yeah. stream? What the freak is that? Uh -huh. And then uh, you guys say pop in Minnesota. We do. We do. I had no it's idea. It's not soda. Was. It's pop. I had no idea what that was. I <laughs> thought you were talking about the cereal or something like that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and so just that that lively banter. And like I said, there's certain there is a place for that, you know, longer, you know, more of a sit down traditional interview. Sure. But your show was like, welcome to the welcome to the party, welcome to the family. Yeah. You know, it's just, you know, let's talk about you, but it wasn't just not just talk about you, but let's celebrate you. Yeah. Um and stuff like Find that. the what things was... that make you happy and smile. I think the yeah. rapid fire questions, those, those interviews, there are times when, you know, we have heavy conversations, but it, you know, it's kind of like the run, right? Like I just have loved going out on runs with people. And even on my podcast, I will, before the pandemic, I was doing some on the run episodes where I'd actually go and have conversations with people while we're walking or running. And that's what I wanted my podcast to be like. Like if you take us in your ears or if you were to watch the YouTube, I want you to feel like you're friends with these people too and just have these open conversations. And I think, I think being the athlete and interviewing people about their athletic journey, I think that's been a way for them to open up to me in a different way. Because you know what it's like to have a conversation that's not, you know, just like you're interviewing someone. You want to have that natural conversation. And I feel like people understood that with me. Like we will have fun on this show. It is not hard hitting news. <laughs> yes. This is not your basic, you know, breaking news. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's a place it's, it's, I forgot the, uh, I forgot the restaurant. I saw it on the diner's drive and some guys, but he said, we don't want people to leave hungry. Yeah. We want everybody to be full. And so metaphorically speaking, it's like, you listen to your podcast, whether it's 25 minutes or whether it's an hour, but you are full because you will get a chance to experience different emotions, you know, mm -hmm. throughout listening and listening and learning from the guest. Has it been everything that you thought it would be? Yeah, it has. You know, I have not gone into the podcast world to um, make it a business. This is a labor of love. I still have a really hard time asking for sponsorship and things like that because I'm like, I'm this is my way of chatting with people that I'm interested in. And I just want to, it's like a old school phone call, you yeah. know? And I grew up with phone calls. My kids, I'm always like, pick up the phone, don't text yes. or, you know? Um, so I really have loved it. It's been really fun for me to get to know people. And like I said, I just want to hear about how people are getting after life. It doesn't mean you are running a world record or making an Olympic team or winning the NCAAs, any of that stuff. That's really fun. And it's part of my like passion because I loved doing that stuff. But I also just love to hear that people get up and they do 20 minutes a day, three times a week. And that fills their cup. Like 
that is really what I think keeps me on that side of the fence where I'm happy and I don't go on the other side and stay there. I, there's days that are blue for me and I get in the little funks, but I search for people in life that are going to either, you know, say, Carrie, you, you're getting annoying. <laughs> My <laughs> sisters will do that. Like, why are you, you know, you're kind of talking negatively or whatever. And I don't want to be around people like that. So I search for people to just chat with once a week and they fill my cup and they, they kind of get me back on track. So that's what I hope I can put out into the world is just people that are excited about life. They might have some hard stuff that they hear on the podcast, but usually they're trying to figure it out or they have gone through the journey and now they're looking back at it thinking, I got through that time. So yeah, I've loved it. It's been really fun. Last two questions, then we're going to wrap this up with a bow with our rapid fire. Oh, and yes, yes. yes. Uh, so commentating and podcasting, how many years have you done both? Um, I started commentating in, well, I did a little bit in high or in college, excuse me. And then in 2002, it was really my first gig after I was second at USA Nationals in cross country. I told Tony Revis, who is a big voice in our sport, has been around forever. Um, I said, I'd like your job one day. And he remembered and he asked me to help him on a rock and roll marathon broadcast. Oh, awesome. So it's been a long time. Um, and, you know, podcasting just since 2016. So you have been in the game for over 20 years. That's legit. Yeah. That's it's crazy. I'm old. No, you're <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I don't like to use the word old. I like to use the word seasoned. I am seasoned because yep. anything that is not seasoned in life is bland and anything that is bland is not worth being around. Just okay. try to eat some food. That's not seasoned. I guarantee you, you're going to want to spit it out or throw it away. True. Yes. True. So seasoned. seasoned. That's yes. my new word. Seasoned. What has been one of the best moments, either commentating or Ooh. I know you've had some fun ones that I've seen on YouTube yeah. um, or throughout the podcast, one that leaves a lasting impression. You know, I'll, when I get asked this question, I always think about Gabe Grunewald, my good friend who is mm. an elite runner and passed away of cancer. I love our episodes. Uh, you know, she never, ever let me talk to her as if cancer was a negative thing in her life. She would flip it right away. And I was always thankful for those runs or those conversations that I had with her because she was living it and she had, you know, a short life and she knew it. And so it was, those were my favorite conversations and I have them. So I can go back and listen whenever I miss her and, yeah. or thinking of her. Um, but one of my favorite moments as a broadcaster was probably when Shalane Flanagan won the New York city marathon. <laughs> I yeah. was crying on air. I was with John Anderson <laughs> I mean, I was a mess and I was so excited, but in that moment we could be excited because there was only one winner and we weren't favoring her. We were talking about the winner and, you know, she and I have kind of grown up in the sport together. And um, so, yeah, that was probably one of my favorite moments of watching her come down and finish and just crush Central Park and, and to break the tape. You've seen so many historic moments. Mm. And I think the cool thing about it is that I don't know if you've sat down and thought about it, but Kara Goucher, I think, did an incredible job um, at Worlds, and I think just she's a uh, great addition. Sonny yeah. Richards Ross uh, does her. an incredible job, but we have so many more female voices in the field uh, and in the broadcast booth, but you pioneered that. Like, you were one of the first and you were one of the first that balled out. And like I said, the Waffle House consistency. I always know what I'm going to get Waffle House. It does not fail because I'm looking right at you. And quick note about Waffle House. If you go to a clean Waffle House, then you need to leave uh, <laughs> because the, <laughs> the food's not going to be that good. Um, you, need, you need a little scrap along the way. Need, you need a little scrap. It needs to look like it's been on hard times. Mm -hmm. but I, this is the last question have you thought about your role and how much you've advanced this sport 
and commentating and podcasting. Uh, because whether you realize it or not, you have. I personally don't believe that the opportunities that so many have today wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the great job Aww. and the wonderful work that you've done. Have you sat down and kind of reflected and thought about that? No, I mean, I I think that there's times where I'm proud that I am one of the first female voices. I mean, you know, Catherine Switzer was one. Dina Castor did some. Um, Julie Benson did some. I mean, there were people that were doing it, but it's been really fun to now see a lot of the athletes come in and try it. You know, I don't know if it was their passion so much. Like, this is what I went to school for. I loved it growing up. I wanted to be on camera. I wanted to be on stage. But yeah, to see Kara slide in and just show her passion and love of the sport in such an elegant way, it's been super fun. To watch Sonia just absolutely crush <laughs> anything that she does, whether it's Housewives or oh, her own personal reality show with her husband, whatever it is, just to show that you know, we can make fast left turns and run really fast in circles, but we also, you know, have something going on upstairs and, and we can deliver that. And yeah, it's been, it's been really cool to be a part of this team of female broadcasters, but also I have to give it up to all the guys that gave me an opportunity or, you know, said you should ask Carrie to be a part of this team. I've had so many really cool guys in the booth with me that have made me better than I ever could have been. So it's it's a really nice world that we live in in this track world track and field world um and the road racing world i just feel like we're here to lift each other up like i say a lot but we really are i think we want to see each other succeed and if it takes that you know somebody else to be a little bit better than us that's okay because it's just something to strive for so yeah i'm i'm proud of that thank you for saying that but i am i'm proud to be one of the first females but i'm i'm really just proud of this team effort that we all have you have survived the questioning portion of the podcast. Now, <sighs> it is the time. interrogation is over. The interrogation is over. We're one, we're one step closer to the grilled cheese and ice cream. <laughs> All right. Now it's time for a segment that I like to call Down the Home Stretch. I'm going to okay. ask you some rapid fire questions. I want them, I want you to answer them to the best of your ability. If you give an answer that I am confused by and what further clarification i will pause it and ask for further clarification it will not count against the time if you do not answer them as fast as you can it is okay but you are competing to get on the medal stand our oh. gold medalist right now is all-american marley stoliper from nc state is, okay also Ooh. a good basketball player i did not know that <laughs> She didn't tell me that. Um, our silver medalist is Miss Sinclair Johnson. Who was just on and, my podcast coming out this week. Oh, okay. Hey, sneak peek. Well, yeah, this will be aired next week. So y'all better have listened to that. Oh. But, uh, and then we have a six-way tie for the bronze. Oh. So we are, are a bunch of people. So Vanessa Frazier, Kara Winger, Eric Sawinski, Ariana Entz, and Sage Herta. Oh, so we have five, five okay. with tie. You're going for the gold. Are you ready? I'm ready. If there was a food that you had to live with and a food that you needed to live without, what would they be? Oh, chicken. I'd have to live with. I love chicken and live without um, prunes. Oh, I agree with that. If there was a trend that you would bring back and a trend that you wish would go away, what would they be? Rat and bangs, like big hair bands, rat and okay. bangs. Um, go away. Uh, um, social media. <laughs> really? <laughs> kind of. So we'll, quick, quick clarification, buddy, I agree with you because life was different <laughs> without social yeah. media. But why do you hate it so much? I don't hate social media. I actually love it, but I'm scared for my kids. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like I can control it. I don't know how to work this into my kid's life. Yeah, I agree with that completely. I think part of the problem is people find their identity on social media and that's the yeah. wrong place to center it. Okay, I'm yeah. good. Let's just say they were going to make a movie about your life and they said, Carrie, we want you to figure out who you want to play your character. We already got the title. It is Silk and Smooth. And then 
the sequel is Get After It. So, um, <laughs> who is the actress that you would like to play you in both movies? Um, a young Cameron Diaz. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I like can a see young, that. I love her as an older woman, but she was so funny when she was like in her 20s. Like all of her movies that I watched, I loved her. So oh, Cameron man. Diaz. I'm definitely down with that. All right. Mm -hmm. What is the best book you've read? Oh, the Bible. Praise him. All right. What is, it's, well, I just came up with this one. Dance move that is severely underrated. The 80s. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a you dance move? You, you, put your, you put your knees together and then you kind of, yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. Kinda, what is, is that, that called? The, I don't the know. Mom but dance? Do I need to show you? If you want to. <laughs> yeah, I think you kind of did something. Uh-oh. Okay, we got a live right demonstration. Right okay. Like this. <laughs> okay. You know the thing about it? I know that they Exactly. Because... What, what's that guy? Um, It's a Carlton. The Carlton is... Oh, yeah, but kind of like that. Kind of like that. But, yeah. Um, I like that dance. So many people do that dance now, but they do not give proper representation to where it came from. Attribution is key to take you where you need to be. I think um, it was Whitney Houston. Yes. I and mean, I've at least heard... that's what I remember with her big bangs in I Want to Dance with Somebody video. Oh, man. Yes. That has been put. Oh, I, I see where you said the Carlton dance. Yeah. So, yes. That's why I got to watch this show on YouTube. There's plenty of dance moves. My episode um, for what is, I mean, my episode, my dance for what it's worth. I'm a big fan of the Cabbage Patch and the Running Man. Oh, uh, the Running Man. Yeah, I like that. The Cabbage Patch. That's good. Dun, dun, okay, that's just me. Okay. okay. What if you had to pick a 90s concert to attend or 80s in the night that's the, that's what i say all the time i would love to see boys Band concert. oh <laughs> so good oh man like, i think they're I just start singing every single song right now what is the top three give me the top three boys oh. to men songs oh gosh well i just keep thinking i'll make love to you i'll make love to you now nah, that's bad we're talking about the lord and Mama. the bible Oh my gosh, that'll make you I cry. don't even let you finish your sentence because I'm like in the groove. <laughs> She's go, mama. Oh. Your love is the thing to my soul. Yes. Mama, Isn't that a good one? I want you to know. Yeah, that's that's I don't know what my third favorite would be. I would probably say it's a tie between three-way tie between it's so hard to say goodbye. Oh, it's so and... hard to say goodbye to say, how, keep it i can't remember right now sing it again to yesterday yeah he... oh. <laughs> um, so good this is what gosh. lewis johnson and i do all the time we like dance and sing all the time in the infield oh my gosh you guys have to it should be that. an episode it should it's, be like before you... and after you have to make a blog a blog series for that. And then the next one would be um they had a song Boys to Men. That one. Oh yes. And um End of the Road. Yeah. Okay, Although sing End of the Road again. To the end of you the sing road. high. I don't have a high I voice can't anymore. Let hey, let go. go. It's, it's a natural. natural. Oh, yeah. Okay, that is. Yeah. Oh man. So I'm just gonna. We could have done this all day. I know you win the gold medal already. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple more questions, but you you win the gold medal. Okay. Alrighty then. Dream vacation spot. Oh, I just went. My sister got married in Turks and Caicos this year. Oh. Or, well, yeah. No, it was last year, last November, 2021. It was amazing okay wow beautiful like we stayed on the side like the beach was like nothing i've ever seen the ocean was like ombre it was like so <laughs> beautiful um yeah it was really cool favorite moment in sports I there's mean, something you're gonna say and i feel like it's gonna make me cry and i'll tell you why in a no. second oh wow. 
I mean, I want to say when I made my Olympic team. Oh, well, yes, that that, that, that was your favorite moment in sport. Come on. It was, and it's, it's te- making me tear up. I know um, right now you're just thinking of that in 2004 when you were like, what age? Well, how old was I? So I'm 28. So I was about, I wasn't knee high to a grasshopper. So I was pretty, I was a, pretty close. I was headed into middle school. <laughs> oh, oh my so, gosh. Yes. Help me. I'm so seasoned. Yes, that's, listen, ain't nothing wrong. The Lord talked about being the salt of the <laughs> earth, and if the salt loses its taste, then it's nothing. So listen. There you go. Preach. Um, so um, I was I was hoping, see, I'm a North Carolina basketball fan, Ohio State football fan, and then I graduated from UCF, so I have to naturally root for them. So I thought she was going to say that doggone shot by Chris Jenkins to win um, <laughs> the the final four. No, but Uh-oh. I did love, I loved watching and I still love watching the final four. Oh, Can I just man. tell you that my mom will walk around the house during the sweet 16 and have four different TVs on at once. Did we, so she's in it. She, she's, she, she's, she will tell me what my favorite moment in sport was because I don't remember things and she remembers everything. So let's have Ginger on the show one day. Listen, wings and hot takes. With Miss Carrie and Ginger Ginger. John. Ginger, yes. I'm down. Everybody's welcome on this show. I listen, don't tempt me. I love that. My dad will say, wait, no, what did you run the 2800 meters in again? Like he can't remember that stuff either. (laughs) I'm like, Dad, it was the 3200 or the 3K. Oh, yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah, that's me. But mom will say, this is when you ran against Kara Wheeler, Kara Goucher now, and you know, you won or she won or whatever. She'll remember it from 1993. So yeah, that's, we'll get her on the show. That's me. Did you run the 5K? No, mom, I ran the marathon. Same thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's me. Yep. Last question. To, okay, I, got, I have to ask the last question, but now I have to ask this question. We already got boys to men. The best vocalist to ever sing. Oh, we've been talking about her the whole time. Whitney Houston. Okay. Th- let me say this. Male vocalist, because I we got female. Male vocalist. Um, oh, my gosh. Andrew Bocelli. Okay. My because pers- he sings the prayer, right? Mm-hmm. And that my husband and I had at our wedding, and I just love that song with Celine Dion. Oh boy, that that is a good one. Mine is Luther Vandross. He's good too. Oh, okay. I hear the disappointment. So let's just go to the last question. <laughs> Why does kindness matter to you? Oh, it's everything in life, you know? I mean, without it, I think that we would just be lost, really. I mean, in, in, in life, there's so many things that can go wrong that if you don't have kind people to be there with you to help you navigate through life, then it's going to be one lonely road. So to me, it's everything. Gold medalist, <laughs> Carrie Tolson, you are tied with Marley Stolper for the gold. Yeah, I think it was Marley that was a basketball player, but maybe I'm wrong. But, you know, I loved her. I got to, I get to announce her name still, but it was fun to meet her at Foot Locker when she ran. And she's a I great have, gal. I have to ask her because she's come on the show a couple times and she's coming. We're going to do a Winks and Hot Takes episode um, with her in December. So I have to yeah. ask her if um, if she was a baller, she just didn't have to say anything. Ask her. But um, can, I remind you that sometimes my statistics get a little scrambled. Well, <laughs> that's okay. When you have to remember them all, naturally oh. it's okay to yeah. to mess everything up. Carrie, yeah. where can the good people of this world find you and support? They can you? find me, yeah, at Instagram. I'm on all the social, even though sometimes I kind of not so good at it, but they can find me at Carrie Tullifson, at Instagram, on Twitter. I'm not good at Twitter at all, but I try. Um, and Facebook for all of you in my generation. That's where I'm at a lot of the time. And then also at <laughs> C. Tolly Run. Well, we need to start a campaign. 
we need to get Carrie to 20K. To yes. 20K. Let's let's do that. I will we get carried to 20k, then I will give a 25% promotion on all of my items, store items, as oh. far as the Latin gas store. Yes. Yay! I have a fried chicken tumbler with my face on it. Uh honest gosh, if I do. I have <laughs> so stickers, good. I have everything. So get carried to 20k. Give me a date. Yeah. What, let's what? let's see well we can give them until the next to 2023 okay january 1st we want yeah. to start the new year um and then we will i will do that discount it'll be a new we'll call it the new year same me discount uh they <laughs> always so say nice. new year new me no you ain't changed it's the <laughs> new year same me discount Carrie, Perfect. thank you so much for coming on the show, for putting up with the questions, and for singing the jams, and even cranking out a dance, and for oh, not man. judging me when I started counting the alphabet instead of reciting it. <laughs> this has been we don't judge. We don't judge. Non discrimination, no. all thriller, no filler. This has been lactic acid. You know where to find me because I said it in the preview. We will catch you next time.